Well, what better way to spend a cold winter's day than with some arts and crafts and friends? Auntie Ashley from Unglued is here <laughs> to show us and talk to us about the eighth annual craft fest. Huh? Yeah, it's crazy. Our eighth so, annual one. Talk about how it's sort of transformed over the past few years. Yeah, so it started in 2011. We wanted to promote modern makers. They weren't selling well at traditional shows or even online. And putting them all together in one place just exploded. They sell out of their work. The community comes and kind of rallies around them and loves the things they're showcasing. And so now we have anywhere from five to 6,000 people come. Um, there's these 70 makers set up both Friday and Saturday at the Plains Art Museum. And there's free workshops and a bunch of other opportunities like the Craft Beer Garden and Young Makers Market. And That's so what so I have bright. here <laughs> are some of the free projects that you can Yay! do with us. These ones are going to be in our crafty lounge. Uh, it's a succulent and a beeswax candle, and then we have a bonus one. But beyond these, from 9 to 4 on Saturday, there's free other, even more skilled workshops that you can come and take for free, mm -hmm. too. So, so There will be uh, ceramic beer stein making, thanks to the Plains Art Museum. Um, there will be hand lettering basics, string art, um, some embroidery ones, snarky awesome. embroidery for adults. And just all kinds of things. I'm going to have to come all day Friday and yeah. Saturday. Coming out. <laughs> so uh, at 9.30 on Saturday, a bunch of people can come and do a commemorative mm. succulent. And so that's what you're going to do here. We have these really cute three-inch pots and these beautiful succulents that I dropped in the snow. <laughs> and I think they're going to be okay. They're going to survive. <laughs> they're succulents. They survive lots yeah. of things. Doesn't it? It feels amazing. It's, this one's actually from Baker's Nursery uh, we got here in town. Um, and so you're going to go ahead, and if you can manage it around all of our stuff, okay. you're going to dump in some dirt into there, but just like an inch or two of dirt. And then we're going to scoop out a little bit of this white perlite. So a lot of times we end up using regular potting soil, um, but then we'll add this perlite. You can add just like a couple scoops, and then we'll, we'll stir like it up. Yep, perfect. So succulents are, they don't want too much water, right? And so perlite is Ooh. actually... That's I okay. Get around this. It's really okay. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I can move here too, so you can squish it. Scooch over, guys. I'm crafting. <laughs> um, and then once that's mixed up, the perlite is just going to help it stay aerated and drain really well, and not get too wet, especially if you accidentally overwater it. Um, and then you can go ahead and squeeze your succulent out of its little plastic container and into our cute white one, <laughs> or just grab it because it did fall out, so it's easier. Plop it in there, and then we'll shove a little bit more dirt into there if you can get it. And that's really all that people need to do, but they'll have the option to add preserved moss like you'll see in front of you. And we have little dinosaurs or little Whoa. deer. <laughs> nice. And I just wanted to say that this would be such an easy party favor to do for your guests, whether it's a wedding. Um, you can make, we, like we did, these mm -hmm. little one-inch custom stickers and uh, get them printed online. Um, so it could be such an easy birthday party favor, wedding favor, that yeah. kind of thing. And we do these a lot for events. So every adult summer camp we do, there'll be a commemorative succulent you can make uh, and put little moths in there, uh, little dinos and all that kind of fun stuff. Nice. So Cute. that'll be on Saturday morning. Nice. And then Saturday, Saturday afternoon, yeah. yes, at 9.30, you can do a rolled beeswax candle. And so we have these beeswax sheets um, that where the beeswax is melted down and then stamped and made into these nice thin sheets for the purpose of candle making. This is the safest way you'll ever make a candle. <laughs> so you don't have to like melt down wax or that kind of thing. And so we, they froze. And so we have smaller pieces to work with today. Okay. <laughs> and so I've already cut a cotton wick. Um, we have it about an inch longer than we need it to be. And you'll kind of see here that this is pretty flexible overall, but eventually it does break in half or you can rip it. And we are trying to avoid doing that. Got okay. And so on this one, you can kind of press down your wick a little bit more. Okay. And then we're going to really carefully force the beeswax to start rolling over it. So we just want to cover the wick with the beeswax. I haven't found these sheets in town ever. Um, so I do get them online, but the braided wicks um, and that kind of thing you can get in candle making supply areas of craft shops. And then we're going to just keep rolling it. And you want to roll it kind of nice and tight as you go. And that is all you need to do. Okay. Your simple. goal yeah. is to be relaxed when you do it because it's really easy to get it uh, kind of off-centered and not really tight and it will be a much more effective candle if you can roll it nice and tight. So just think of how easy this would be at a kid's birthday party yeah. or some other craft night you want to do and with your you friends. you can have your kids playing with fire. <laughs> <laughs> Later on they can light it. Exactly. <laughs> if it does break like mine did here, your, the heat of your hands will actually warm it up enough to kind of mold back onto itself. Mm -hmm. And you just keep rolling it. And then you end up with these great candles 
This is an extra tall one. You do want it to be propped up in something like a tapered candle holder uh, if it's a skinnier candle like these guys are so okay. that you can burn it safely. Nice. And then you win. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then in our crafty lounge all day, you can do watercolor resist fun <clears throat> things. And so we'll actually have some like coloring sheets that are meant for watercolors, but then you can also do postcards um, using resist. And so we'll kind of make a little bit more space here. And Christy, you are yes. going to add on masking fluid. This smells really terrible. It smells like feet. Um, but we have these. Uh, you can use regular watercolor paper, or you can buy these postcards that are watercolor paper. And you're going to dip this into our smelly masking fluid here. And you're just going to write a word or make a heart. I thought Ufta would be pretty solid to put on one of these. Okay. Especially being that we are going to be doing this in the great old Midwest in the dead just of winter. Just UFDA, right? Yeah. Ooh, how much? Uh, it, you'll kind of see as it, it's kind of like a thick paint feeling thing. And so you could even just do oof or something like that. It doesn't have to be super thick, but it is easier to pull it off later uh, if it is nice and thick. So this is going to prevent paint from going on where where you're going to paint uh, over. So you'll oh, kind of see stink. here. That's not, oh, good lord. <laughs> you can have like a polka dot oofta. It's good. <laughs> um, you could always let, if you got excess on, you could let it dry. And then before you do any of your painting, you can pull it off. And so it won't do this preventing of the paint going on there. But it's a resist technique. So fancy people use this. And people just trying out for the first time some crafting will I use it. it. So all you need to do is ultimately let it dry, mm -hmm. which is where our love one is at here. And you'll kind of see it's shiny. Mm -hmm. And I can touch it, and it's not coming off on my finger. And it only takes, like, if it's thinner, maybe, like, a minute to get to this point. And then you can actually Not this start. Oofta. No, okay. the oofta is a little thick, but it will make your life a lot easier taking it off, which is a win. Um, so then we'll have these little watercolor sets that you can use, and I think we got some water right here. So this would be a really easy craft to do in the middle of winter with your kids. You get these really cute little watercoloring sets. And I'm just going to do normal watercolor right over the resist um, and the masking fluid that we have going on here. And you'll kind of just paint it. Uh, the more water you use, the thinner your color will be. And you just paint directly over your oofta okay. uh, with watercolor. And it'll kind of be like this love here that we've started. It's a little hard there. Oh, uh, yeah, it is uh, hard to see that. But uh, this one will be a little easier. Okay. There you go. <laughs> so Slay is actually a word that's on our Craft Fest poster, so we thought we would put it on a use postcard that. as well, because that's fun, Beyonce. Um, so it'll end up like this. You let it dry. And then you just use your fingers to pull off the resist. And so you'll see here, I kind of had to rub it to initially start doing this. But it'll pull off and it'll leave your word or your design. Nice. And so people will be able to come and just kind of play around with all these art supplies. Um, and we will have sheets that already have patterns pre-done on them. Um, so that all you're doing is adding the color over it and there'll be a pineapple underneath it oh, or something cute like that. I like that because obviously yeah. my oofta didn't turn out too well. <laughs> But what like the it. Craft Fest is awesome is that you guys have a lot of different makers. You're going to have yeah. 70 of them there with a lot of different cool, unique things. Yes. So on both sides of this, we have all kinds of new products that will be at the Fest this year. Out of the 70 makers, 40 are new to the Fest this year. We have things like our Young Makers Market. So on our side over here, we have a young maker who made catnip toys and uh, she made scrunchies. So we learned today that scrunchies are back in. Nice. I am super They're behind back. on the times, I guess. <laughs> Pretty excited for those. Um, we have somebody coming who's doing llamas out of upcycled fabrics. There's a girl in town who's just 19 who is a macrame artist cool. doing these beautiful pieces. The Red River Market will also be there on Saturday from 9 to 4. And so flannel fizz and chia balls and fresh mm. eggs and things like that will be there, wow. which will be amazing. You want to smell this fancy little candle up it's here too? Really nice. That's so tell a people hard when they can come. Friday is the paid night. Yep. Paid admission. Yep. Friday is uh, from five to nine. It's fifteen dollars in advance, twenty at the door. It includes the beat the the crowd on Saturday shopping yes. night. You get five dollars unglued cash to spend. There's three projects you'll get to do too that are all included. And then Saturday nine to four is totally free to check out all this amazing stuff and shop. Yeah. And then there's a huge schedule of workshops to do too. <laughs> I love it. Don't forget that you can go online, check out all of their events for those workshops. Thank you, Ashley. Yes, thank you guys. Yay. I'm so excited for it. <laughs> all right, we have more to come here in North Dakota today when we come back.